guys and welcome back to the MTA scripting school finally after uh, about six months we are finally going to continue because I've got a new microphone finally I uh, had some stuff for school to do but that doesn't matter now we are going to do a little mini episode because I have to go in about yeah one hour because I'm having a job interview and because of that, we will just do a, a mini episode about um, manipulating the camera, the player camera. And this is going to be a client sided script, so you need to be in your C underscore object dot Lua uh, script. This one right here, client side. And um, the episode about the graphical user interfaces will be the next one. Uh, because last time I said this one will be it, but. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't have time now, but I want to make an episode, and yeah. And it will, uh, a graphical user interface episode will take quite long to produce, and it will be quite long, like, let's say, at least 30 minutes. At least. Okay, so, what can we do with the functions that camera met metrics? Um, we can do very different stuff. We can use it to, let's say, we could use um, it to roll the camera, as you can see here, float roll equals zero normally. Um, we can change the field of view and we could make something like uh, an effect, like we put the camera on, um, on a roof and then we could do something like a cutscene, like let the player drive from one to one point and, and let the camera follow uh, the player or a specific object and we're going to do something very easy at the beginning we're going to do um, first of all let's go in a car for later okay uh, we're just going to do that the camera will maybe stick like here and check, look at the player or maybe like here and yeah it will be very very easy it will not take very long but yeah uh, let's let's start Shall we? Yeah, we shall. Okay. Oh fuck. Um, as for, uh, first of all, we need something to trigger the camera mode. So let's just add a command handler. With add command handler, then we name um, cinematic, and the function will be uh, let's call it uh, cinematic enable this enable no, 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 cinematic. Um, Let's just call it cinematic. And now let's write a function cinematic. We need no arguments. Maybe we could take no, no, no. We don't. We don't take any arguments. Um. Oh, you know what? Ah, no, no. I was about to take uh, one argument, but no, we're not going to do that. Uh, first of all, we need a new boolean value, and we will declare that up here. Uh, this will be a local. Boolean. Ah, sorry. Um, let's call it. Let's call it. Let's see. Um, cin uh, c underscore cinematic uh, bool. Now let's call it b cinematic. Perfect. And this will be false from the beginning on. Also, put a local keyword in front of the functions. If you're just going to use the function in this one script, just do it. Um, Okay, we got our bool. Now we need to do this. Um, B cinematic equals not B cinematic. So what this does is just it sets the value of B cinematic to the value of not B, cin B cinematic. So if the value of B cinematic would be false, it would it would set it to true, and if it would be true, it would set it to not uh, to false. And yeah, it's as easy as that. And that's everything we are going to use, uh, going to do in the uh, command handler function. We are now going to add uh, an event handler, which we, uh, which will be the on client render. Um, then we're going to bind it to the root, and we're going to call the function r cinematic. And now local function r cinematic. And this will be the function to um, manipulate the camera. And then we're just going to do if b cinematic then. 
So we are, we are just checking if a VB cinematic is enabled or not. And if it's enabled, then we're going to do the stuff which is inside here. First of all, we go, we're going to need local um, post underscore, no, post player equals get element, element position. Here we go. Element position local player. We can use local player because this is a client sided script. Local player does not work on the server sided script. Don't forget that. And then we are going to. Yeah, we're going to define the offset right here. Uh, offset x equals minus 5. Offset y is also minus 5. And offset z is 3.5. Okay, and now we are going to use set camera matics. As first of all, we're going to need the x coordinate of the uh, camera. So this will be. Oh, wait, I forgot something. X, Y, and Z. Here we go. Uh, let's call it PZ. Yeah, that sounds way better. Uh, PY and PX. Here we go. Now, PX minus OX. We're going to. Uh, OX because we're just going to recall them to this. Uh, just tap them tap them into one space because this just looks way better than the way I did it before. Let's make it one more. Yeah, okay, let's keep it like that. So um, BX plus OX B, uh, PY plus OY and PZ plus OZ. And now we've got our camera um, at our position spot. But will not do the thing we want because we want it to look at the player and we can do that by just typing in the player co coordinates now px py and pz now we could just type in some roll effect like let's say 25 and a fourth of 90 and now let's check on the wiki if we did everything right with the um, x position of the camera the y position of the camera the z position of the camera then we look at positions and then 25 and 90 we have to look down here, and yeah, we did everything right. Good job. Now uh, it's saved. Let's go in game. Enable the debug script. Debug script three. Here we go. And then restart. Now it's cinematic, and here we go. Now we have some cool camera effect. We can't move the camera on our own on our own now. Just kind of sad. You can see this. This, this looks kind. It's, it's kind of cool cinematic effect, and you can do everything with that. Like let's say, uh, da, 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 da. first of all, we did something. Yeah. Okay. Now we could, if we disable it, we can. Uh, the camera will just stay there. We're going to fix that for a second. Just this will be easy. We are going to have to do if. Um, B cinematic equals false, then and then set camera target target. Here we go, and then set the target to the local player. This is another MTA function which sets the camera target. This can only be um, applied to I think players, so don't forget that or vehicles, players and vehicles maybe or only players. I think it was only players, but I don't know. Um, now we would just. We start our script and now cinematic. Well, hello, we are inside of a mountain. Uh, cinematic, and now the camera is back on the player again. Perfect. And now we would just do one more thing. Ah! Okay, we're going to make a global, um, well, for our script, global variables on the top. We're going to call them. Um, CX, CY, and CZ. And then we're going to do uh, local. No, wait. CX, uh, CY, and CZ equals PX plus OX, PY plus OY, and PZ plus OZ. And this will be CX, CY, and CZ. Set. Now we are going to have to move this stuff 
up. Okay, it's a little, let's do an else step here. Else, okay, we go. Put it right here. And now we can remove this, but not this one. We will still need this one because of the look at. Now let's just make uh, this. And what we just did is we, you know what? Let's just look at it again. First of all, let's move a bit right here. Now, B cinematic. No, no, wait. Cinematic. Here we go. Now the camera just follows the player. It stays on one fixed position. And as you can see, this looks very, very, very cool. And this is just very, very awesome. I, I very like, I like it very much. Um, you can use this type of camera manipulation in your map, as example, for like a deathmatch map um, or a normal race map. You can, you can do so much things with it. You can do cutscenes with that. You can, well, things like cutscenes, not cutscenes, but. You know, you know the point. Um, there's so, just so much things you can do with that. You can also menu um, change the normal, you know, the normal free cam where you move around. Let me just slash cinematic. There we go. Now we're back normal. Um, you know, this free cam. If we would start it as example. No, wait, wait, we need editor. Editor. And here we go. You could this is the free cam. You could edit this free cam to add um, rotation and changing field of view stuff inside of it. Like when you're moving around here, you could do something that the um, camera can roll around and make barrel rolls and everything. You can do so much stuff with, with that, and that's why it's amazing. Um, I'm going to add a little example of what you can do with the. Uh, um, camera manipulation in the in your map as example and uh, yeah so I guess I'll I think that's it for this episode well about it I'm just gonna show you one more clip in a second and yeah I hope you liked this very very short episode let's see 12 minutes that's kind of much even more than I thought it would be um, yeah Next episode, I think maybe next week, it should be out next week, we're going to look at the uh, graphical user interfaces and we're going to do so much cool stuff. Maybe I've already set up some background picture, like this would be the background picture of our first graphical user interface thingy. It will be something very easy and not very useful, but it will be a cool feature and Maybe some of you can just build something up on that. So I'm just going to pause the video and get you back as soon as I'm uh, ready to show you the clip on the map on how you uh, what you can do with uh, the carrier manipulation we did right here. Oh, by the way, uh, before I forget it, um, some of you may ask uh, may ask themselves why we did use on client render. That is because the set camera matrix only up when we set it to like this. And we would set it like when we set uh, when we write cinematic, we would put this line right here as example. Um, the camera would just just like it did um, a second, uh, just like we already did it right here because we did C X C Y and C Z, saved them right here, so the camera doesn't change place every second because as you know, on client render gets caught um, many many times per second depending on your frames per second rate. And yeah, if we would not have put the set camera matrix thing inside of the on client render, on client pre-render, we could also use pre-render. Uh, that would be also a good idea. But doesn't matter. Um, if we would have put this line up here, when it would just set the camera once, it would make it look at a fixed position you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna show this to you for a second. No, I, I already closed the server, okay. Um, yeah, if we would write slash cinematic, then it would set the camera to that position, look at the position of our player, and if a player moves, it would not update the camera. So it would just look at that direct position. Just just don't forget, don't forget uh, you maybe will need that for some parts of some maps or something, or of some of your scripts, or your cutscenes. But yeah, 
don't forget you can do so much stuff with this also don't forget these arguments right here are all optional you can you don't have to actually use them in your um, function call okay now I'm just going to make a quick cut and we are going to see us in a second okay um yeah welcome back that was quite big and now I'm just going to show you a little thing on what you could do with the camera manipulation um, Wait a second until it starts and here we go, you can see we, you could do something like this um, Make the camera follow something else than the player and look at the player You could do so much stuff with it, you just, it's unbelievable But yeah I hope you liked this episode. If you did, you could please give me a thumbs up so I know that you like the content I made. Like, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can just write it to me on YouTube, on uh, the FFS Gaming Forum, or on Skype. My Skype name is in the description, uh, just for information. So if you have any questions, just add me, write me some messages, tell me you love me. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I hope you liked this episode of the MTI Scripting School. I'm sorry that it wasn't something big or something like I told you last time, but don't, don't, don't lose hope on me. In the next episode, we are finally going to do something very cool and very awesome. And till then, we'll see us.